Hey there fellow minions of technology, my name is Tim Lee, welcome to Legacy Studio. Today I figured I would go ahead and show you a little bit about my editing process in uh, DaVinci Resolve. I love this program, it's free to use, it's actually truly amazing that it's free. Uh, it's the best program in the market, hands down. I, uh, I've used uh, Adobe Premiere forever and, and loved it for quite a long period of time, but then when I learned about uh, DaVinci Resolve, I downloaded it and I, I have no ability or desire to go back to where I once was. So I want to share with you a little bit about what I do and edit, how I edit my videos. And I specifically want to show you this guy right here. This is the Shuttle Pro version 2. Now this has been out on the market for a while and honestly I've had this in a drawer for a while. But when you see what, how I have this set up, it's truly an awesome quick editing device. And you guys know about how I talk about doing quick content. Quick content is very important to me. That's how I've been getting videos out almost every day recently right now due to the coronavirus and being here at home. I get done my day job and then I come right in here and I get right to work on my stuff. And whatever makes my process quicker, I'm willing to invest in it. And this guy right here, the Shuttle Pro V2, has really done the job for me. So I just finished recording a video that is uh, my latest Minecraft video. It's part two of my Minecraft videos. I just, I'm trying gaming for giggles to see about if I'm any good at doing gaming videos. Um, and so what I wanted to do is go ahead and bring you in on the process of how, uh, how I work in DaVinci, which isn't going to be quite that so much as highlighting how good this is with DaVinci and how I have it programmed so you can see it for yourself because it's really it really speeds up the process for me uh, yes I know all the key commands for my keyboard but there's just something awesome about utilizing this instead it really does the job so let me go ahead and show you what we have up coming up here so right here we are in DaVinci Resolve on my screen and I'm gonna go ahead and pull in my media uh, I have all of my media saved into my video folder on my main drive so let's go into my main videos folder here and find my Minecraft video that I was working on. We'll open that one up. And I don't change my settings because I wanted to just set in its standard frame. And then we're gonna go ahead and go into this mode here, which is the edit mode. I don't use this other thing at all. I don't even know how to use it. I haven't looked into it. And we're gonna go ahead and take this video and click and drag it into our timeline. Now, truth be told, my computer is very, very, very sluggish. I'm trying to see if we can get it upgraded. Uh, I got some stuff I'm trying to do to see if we can make that happen. Um, until that time, you're going to have to bear with me in this. So what we're going to do is, first off, I'm going to check my audio, and I want to turn up the audio to make it so it's as loud as possible without overdoing it. So we're just going to go ahead and crank the audio up here until it's at a point where it's almost at the top of this, but not quite peaking. And now we're going to start talking about how this works with this system here, okay? So I have a whole series of buttons all programmed in here, and each one serves a purpose. My hand will naturally rest on here, and the main buttons I use are the reverse button, pause button, the forward button, and then right above this I have a split button, I have a ripple delete button, I have an insert button, which I barely use, and then on the inside here I have a magnet button. Down here on this side, I have a save button, and over here I have a delete button. And this is different than ripple delete, so we'll get there when we get there. We can set inserts and outs, uh, outs insert and outsert, insert in, in and outs, in and out points or in and out markers for videos using these two buttons that I have here and here on both sides. I have an undo and redo button, and I honestly don't remember what I have those two programmed to do. And then, I, of course, the jog wheel, which is absolutely awesome if your computer's fast enough mine isn't all that fast and then finally the jog wheel that's really nice and springy that just lets you quickly fast forward and re rewind through your content um, which I don't use this as much as I use this I love that I can pinpoint exactly what I need here if I want to look like I'm picking my nose or something I can easily get right to the point where I'm picking my nose and I'm good you know and so I can get literally frame by frame adjustments here which is super helpful alright so Let's go ahead here and just show you guys how I do some quick editing. Let's, and you're going to see how much I use this and how little I go over to my keyboard. Yes, I know my hand is covering this up quite a bit, but I'll try to explain what I'm doing in the moment as I'm doing it. So here we go. Starting from the start of this here, 
Hey there, fellow minions of technology. My name is Tim Lee. Welcome to Legacy Studio. In okay, great. So what I'm going to do is move this video clip out. I'm going to import my intro. We'll bring that in here. And for the moment, I'll just put it in the front. Here we go. And then we're going to click on this open space here and do a ripple delete. And that will just bump it right in. And now I can just go here, hit forward. Hey there, fellow minions of technology. My name is Tim Lee. Welcome to Legacy Studio. About is it good guys? Is it bad guys? Uh, a lot of votes. A lot of votes. Well, a couple of votes. Are... All right, right here. I'm not too happy with this edit. Let's start people saying that I should go and attack the tower. So we're gonna... so we're gonna run back here. And instead of saying a lot of votes, I'm gonna edit that out. So I'll hit forward and see what we can do to take over the tower. Uh, to start out our video today though I think we need to go and see what the tower is really about is it good guys is it bad guys uh, a lot of votes All right, right there so, so, about all that. so yeah I, guys uh, a lot of votes so, about all that. so right here I'm gonna go ahead and hit split and it's gonna split this track into two which I think if I would usually do that I would have to hit B on my keyboard and then I would have to go in here and cut it manually with my mouse and then I'd have to hit V on my keyboard or A one of those two buttons so it makes a selection tool now I can just hit split click on the video clip that I want to get rid of and uh, then ripple delete and boom it'll be gone and it'll move everything over now let me make sure my edit is correct here so I'm gonna undo with my undo button let me go play it back here again our video today though I think we need to go and see what the towers okay good fast yeah. forward a couple of votes or a lot of votes a couple of a lot of votes a lot of votes right there we'll split it right there and now we'll go ahead and do ripple delete to remove that and let's see how that sounds. Really about is it good guys? Is it bad guys? A couple of votes are people saying that I should go and attack the tower. So we're going to go and attack the tower. But we need. So really, that's the simplicity of this little device here. Just having that front back. I'm a little nervous. Split and ripple delete. That's all awesome. Now, if I'm doing something where I don't want things to interlock with each other, I don't want things to butt into each other, then I hit magnet and that'll turn on and off the magnet so files won't click into each other. Now they'll slide freely around each other, which can be helpful. Uh, d uh, the delete button, ripple delete takes whatever is in the middle of two cuts, removes it, and then slides everything together. My delete button will simply delete what's in there and leave those clips separated wide until I say otherwise. That's a nice feature when you want to keep things in a certain way and adjust accordingly. Um, and then insert, if I was working in another mode uh, where I have two screens popped up and I'm actually watching multiple videos and I'm choosing parts and pieces out of one video to then slide into my main mix, then I would use insert to slide that in. That's a nice feature. And then if I'm working in that mode, the in, in and out button are pretty necessary for that. Um, I can't really demonstrate that in this video. And that style of editing is a, is a very original style um, that was basically done when people were working between reel-to-reel -reel or VHS tapes. Basically, you would watch one VHS tape on one screen, and then you would have your other tape on your other screen, and that's the one that you're going to record into. And then what you would do is you would tell your computer that you want to start the tape at this point and end it at this point, and right there is then going to be recorded into the other one. And it was a necessity to do things that way. Um, that is a theory, a way to edit that's not necessary anymore. Now we can take everything, throw it on the timeline, and edit it in the timeline. Not have to select it somewhere else and say, okay, now record it into the timeline. Big difference. Anyway, that's just a quick lay of the land of using the Shuttle Pro V2. Let me quickly show you one other little thing before I let you go, and that's its software that it works with, okay? So what we're going to do here is just run down to the bottom of my screen here and come up here to Explore EXE. And we can click on the open control panel, and that'll pop it up here on one of my screens. And you can see Shuttle Pro V2. There's also something called Key Composer and About, uh, which obviously, if you need help, you can call this number. But really, Shuttle Pro V2, if you look here, there's pre settings for every program known to mankind. And you can also create your own. And I did a global settings function, and then I started programming things in here. If you want to learn a little bit more about this, let me know and we can make a follow-up video on this. But truth be told, if you're looking for something that just works really well with editing, um, this thing is absolutely phenomenal. And I think I got it for 100 bucks. 
um, quite, uh, it was probably a couple months back, maybe about, maybe close to six months back, and it really is just excellent, and also incredibly ergonomic, uh, it's, it's, it's sm lower, at the top of this wheel, it's the same height as my keyboard, so this is as flat to the table as you can get, and it feels great, uh, on the hand when you're working with it. So I strongly suggest it, and uh, you know what, the other option would be a left-handed gamer pad, which I also have. If you guys are curious about that, let me know and I can make a review on that. Uh, that was a Logitech gaming pad that I still enjoy to use on occasion when I need to. I got that mainly for when I was editing and doing drawings on my Wacom Cintiq. If you're curious about that, let me know. But this thing right here, the Shuttle Pro V2, worth checking out. Uh, the link is going to be in the description below uh, on my... Um, list down below and if you're curious about some of the stuff that you may see in some of this video some of the things i work in there is a humongous list of items down below that all link to amazon i'm an amazon affiliate if you purchase any of those things through that list then you support my channel at no extra cost to you i'd greatly appreciate it god bless you guys we'll see you next time right here on legacy studio make sure you behave yourselves but if you don't make sure you get it on camera and make sure to keep it clean god bless y'all we'll see you next time bye Thank you.